Hi, everybody, and welcome to this special live stream um, coming to you from Australia and South Africa. <laughs> it's great to have everybody join us. I know it's, well, depending on where you are in the world, on our side, it is quite early, um, but it's great to have all of you join. I'm going to give this a few minutes just to let a few more people join us. Um, you know the drill with these lives, please in the comment section, let us know who you are, where you're joining us from. Um, I have a very special guest with me today who I'll introduce in just a minute. If you have any questions related to the topic of this live, please put them in the comment section and we'll do our very best to have them answered. Um, again, thank you so much. I see we've got a few people joining already. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Um, so as you know from our Facebook post, uh, we're going to be celebrating um, International uh, International Day of Action for Women's Health, and that's celebrated every year on the 28th of May. And joining me today, I have my special guest, um, powerhouse of a woman and someone who is making a significant impact on women's health as a certified coach, Tracy McBeath. Tracy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, well, thank you for having me and thank you for doing it in a time zone that does suit me here in Melbourne. <laughs> so it's nice not to be up in the middle of the night, although I would get up in the middle of the night for Nutrition Network, you know that. But thank you so much for having me. It's such an honour to be here and talk to you and share a little bit around what I've seen around women's health. Fantastic. It's such an honor to have you here. We always really enjoy having or sharing this platform with you. Um, <clears throat> so as I mentioned, tomorrow is International Day of Action for Women's Health. And this gives us an opportunity to highlight um, the demands towards the fulfillment of women's rights to health. Um, I mean, on the day to day, we know women face so many challenges. We've got gender based inequalities, domestic violence, discrimination, um, as well as, you know, very many health issues, which is our focus. Um, and some of these health concerns include heart health, autoimmune diseases, metabolic disease, including diabetes, hypertension, obesity, um, and then the various types of cancers, breast cancers, ovarian cancers, and so much more. Um, so I'm really excited to have Tracy with us today. Um, Tracy is one of the Nutrition Network coaching lecturers. Um, she is both a coach and a personal trainer. And um, recently, she's contributed her expertise towards the Nutrition Network's latest offering. So you may have seen on our social posts, in June, Nutrition Network will proudly be launching um, our first course in sports nutrition. And in this training specifically, JC focuses or pays um, attention to a very key topic called Exercise and the Modern Woman. So really, really excited to hear what you have to share with us today about this. Um, she'll be sharing her insights, uh, a, a little bit of what she shares in the training. But before we delve into that, um, I just wanna ask you a few questions, Tracy. Women, you know, we, we know this already, women juggle so many different roles and very demanding roles. And that's resulted in a very demanding lifestyle. How much um, does lifestyle impact on women's health, specifically um, to some of the, the health challenges that I mentioned earlier? Yeah, look, obviously they fundamentally impact, uh, you know, women's health, the lifestyle. And I think there's, there's two parts of that that I'd like to address. Firstly, it's the, the, the accurate information that women have access to. And I think that's a really big driver of the work I do because I feel that so many uh, people but women in particular don't necessarily have access to the right information I mean diet fundamentally key to that and just in terms of my personal experience being a personal trainer under the high carb low fat era was so so different and obviously you know affected my health very poorly uh, as a personal trainer until I switched over and learned about low carb healthy fat and I think you know, just giving people the right information is fundamentally really important. But then as a woman and as a mom, I'm a mom of five, I have my own business and, you know, obviously a lot of demands uh, on me. And I think it's really important that as women that we work out what's important to us uh, and what we value, because I think if we don't have clarity around what is important, we will get pulled 
by what's important to everybody else around us, whether that's our culture, whether that's, you know, extended family, whether that's our work, all the other things that can go on and people and things that can really pull our attention away from, you know, possibly what does matter for us. And I think it's really important that we pull the handbrake on very uh, often and ask those questions. Are we living the values that we want and is our behavior in alignment with that? And if it's not, then, you know, we can do what we need to do to try and address that. Of course, you know, the world is as it is. There's so much that we can't change, but the way we see what we do, we do have a lot of uh, impact that we can have around that. And I think in terms of lifestyle, the way we find joy in what we do is a really, really, really important part of it. If we see something like exercise as a burden, as a punishment, uh, as just another thing we have to do to be healthy or to be complete or to be everything that we think we need to do, then it's probably not going to bring us the things that we're hoping or the real potential that it can actually bring if we can turn around and look at it from a different perspective. Oh, I love how you put that, Ellie, because I feel like, especially when it comes to, to exercise, it almost feels like it is a have to, we have to, it isn't something that women just sort of embrace and enjoy, it's just done because, you know, you have to look a certain way, you have to do a certain, so I love your perspective on like just changing the narrative, very excited for you to jump into that. Um, before we get into that though, um, as I mentioned, you're one of the key lecturers in our latest training. Um, your topic is called Exercise in the Modern Woman, which we're gonna get to in just a minute. Um, but before we delve into that, why was this topic of specific interest to you? Well, I think really because it's an opportunity to, to give to give people accurate information, you know, I think the word in itself, exercise, gen, you know, generally brings up a whole lot of, um, you know, as I said, beliefs or thoughts and, you know, oh, you know, it's just another have to and we have to slog at the gym and, oh, but I don't look that way, I don't enjoy that or, you know, we have a whole lot of thoughts and stories around exercise but I think, you know, I think the biggest purpose of, of being involved in this program, I'm so thrilled that you did have asked me to do it, is to really, really question the benefits and the differences when we are fat adapted. You know, as I said, for me, being personally fat adapted now for nearly nine years and, and exercising under that metabolic banner, so being able to be fueled by fat, it's changed totally for me. And it's, you know, it is something that I love I so enjoy it. Um, it's not a burden, but yes, I work with many, many women where, who come to me initially with it being a burden. And a lot of that comes from the fact that they're metabolically unwell. Their bodies aren't really able to make the energy they need to do what they want to do in terms of exercise so, or movement, you know, however we want to call it, just moving our body in a way that feels good. Um, so yeah, so that's, you know, really just questioning the narrative, getting people, I love getting people to to just question their beliefs and shake up their stories and just see what else is available to them. Because if, you know, we continue to sort of go down the vein of that belief, is it helping us? Is it getting us where we want to be? And, you know, that's kind of where I want to come in just to kind of shake up a few ideas around all of that. And we love it. Thank you so much for getting to be part of this fantastic course as well. Um, I'm going to give you the floor and opportunity to discuss some of the content that you share in the lecture. Um, as I've mentioned, if you've got any questions, um, comments, please feel free to share in the comment section. I see we've got a few comments coming in. I see Adrian um, and uh, Dr. Angela Stanton are on here. Great to have the both of you join. Um, please feel free to drop any comments in the section, um, the comment section, and I am now going to officially hand over to Tracy. Okay, well, so I'm not allowed to give too much away in terms of what I'm covering in the content, because obviously we want you to, to buy the program and then go through it. But, um, you know, I guess I've touched on it already a little bit in terms of what I'm going to be talking about. And that's hopefully just to shake up a few ideas and a few uh, beliefs that we have around it. And really, to help people really find, particularly women, to find joy in moving. And I think it's something that we have to assess a lot in our life. I mean, when I was a mom, as I said, I'm a mom of five, when my kids were very little, you know, exercise was something that wasn't necessarily a priority for me, but my mental health was. So, you know, finding, you know, time just to go outside and go for a walk or, 
um, what have you, rather than slogging it out at the gym. Not that I ever do that. And I still don't do that now because I just don't have time. You know, my, my workouts have changed. And I think that's the whole point. You know, we can let go of a whole lot of beliefs and stories and really just show up to look at well, what's important to us. And I think, you know, uh, asking those questions, why is it important? What is it about it that's important? You know, really understanding the value of it. I mean, for me, um, I particularly want to stay strong um, as I age and combine that with the power of low carb eating and eating enough protein, hopefully giving myself the best chance of that, being able to look after myself, being able to, if I trip over, not being, you know, being able to recover quickly. Um, all those things are really, really important to me. So when we are clear on what we value, then that, that then can become what drives our behavior in the day to day. But we have to ask ourselves those questions. So often we just get on the treadmill and we go and we don't pull that handbrake on and ask those questions to make sure our behavior is in alignment of where we want to go. So my talk will be covering what I see in my work. So uh, as I said, I was a personal trainer for 12 years. I combined coaching with health coaching with personal training for a couple of years. And now for the last six years, I've just been in, into health coaching. But I still very much help women find joy in movement. Um, all my clients find joy in movement, depending on what their goals are. Um, and I share what I've seen as the top five barriers. And when I say barriers, they're really beliefs or thoughts that people have around how to make it work for them. So um, I'm going to talk about then one of the biggest ones is that exercise is our tool for weight loss. And those of you who've been in the low carb space for quite some time and are fat, adapt them, fat adapted themselves and have listened to Prof Noakes will obviously know that abs are made in the kitchen and diet is fundamentally the most important thing. So I get my clients to make sure they get the diet right first, particularly if they don't do any movement or exercise when they come to me. Um, but if they do, then we need to back off a little bit and get the diet right first and look at all those little challenges first. Uh, number two, I'm going to talk about motivation, the myth of motivation. It's one of my favorite topics to talk about. It's such a temporary thing. I mean, motivation in every human being waxes and wanes. It's never going to be up all the time. So how do we find the motivation to keep doing what's important to us? And I think that's key, finding out what's important to us and knowing that the feeling of doing all that is going to come and go. But when we have clarity around why we're doing what we're doing and what is important, then that becomes what motivates us. That becomes what drives us, particularly around exercise, I don't feel like doing it every day and sometimes I don't and I think um, you know that's something else I talk about is listening to your body and knowing when it's time to take a break I mean the benefits of exercise or you know um, moving are really going to come in the rest so when we're obviously doing it we're stressing our body we're putting stress on our muscles so that they repair stronger and we need to have that rest time for that to happen I'm also going to talk about being in a rush. So, you know, becoming fat adapted, depending on where our state of metabolic health is sitting, is going to take some time. Um, of course, we want everything now. And if we change our diet straight away and we, we don't allow for this, you know, metabolic gray zone where our body is not going to be really, you know, using energy from glucose, it's not going to be using energy from fat. If we don't understand what's going on there, then we might think, oh, it's all a waste of time. I'm going to go back to the carbs because I felt good on that. Again, how's it working? We have to answer those questions. Really look, is it getting us where we want to be? And allow for our body to become adapted. I've seen some people take up to six months. It's very individual. A male who is young and fit may not take long at all. But, you know, a female who is a little bit older, has been dieting a lot, has poor metabolic health, is probably going to take a little bit of time. And it's two steps forward, one step back. Um, but obviously not beating ourselves up in the process is really, really important. Brings me into another one topic I'm going to talk about, which is the perfection myth. How many times I've had a client say to me, I can't go to the gym because I'm too fat. You know, and that just breaks my heart. I think, you know, it's about doing the best we can and listening, you know, not really listening to and paying attention too much to all the stories that we've got in our head. Um, you know, the gym might not be for everybody, but outside in nature, going for a walk, there are many, many things we can do. Um, I have a client that started burlesque dancing. I had a client that started Greek dancing. 
there are no rules. It's about what you enjoy and it's about the feeling that we get and the way that we see what we do when we do it. Um, I really think that that's what we have to look at, that, you know, the joy and find the joy in what we do. But also know that how we felt exercising when we were high carb, low fat is probably going to be really, really different when we are fat adapted and we've got that optimal fuel flooding <laughs> through our body. It just feels really, really different and we recover quicker. quicker. We've got so much more energy, um, but it's about just doing the best we can. And, you know, perfection is such a made up myth. There's a lot of stories in our head around that. If we can step aside from that, get back into what matters to us, get back into our values and keep moving forward one day at a time. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about not listening to our bodies. You know, a really, really big thing. We've been conditioned to listen to everybody else instead of ourselves, but we are our own best guide. And with time, we can really listen to the messages that our body is sending us. And particularly when we're building in movement and it's one of the many, many things that we have on our plate. You know, you know sometimes I want to go out for a run or go and do some training and my, kid, my child might be sick. Well, you know, it's a no brainer for me. I'm going to miss out on my session to be with my child. And I, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. You know, I think it's just a matter of the more present we are in our day, uh, the more we can listen to our body. And if we have to rest, we have to rest. I mean, compassion, self-kindness, all those things come into health. And uh, the more we can show those things to ourselves, then, uh, you know, the more clearer we'll be about what matters to us, not what matters necessarily to everybody else around us. So, that's kind of a quick summary, um, Maz, without really giving too much away, but just uh, hopefully I didn't give too much away, but just uh, wanting to share there around what I'm going to be covering in the, the lecture. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that, Tracy. Um, I just want to share some of the comments from um, the comment section. Uh, Yana, Yana, thanks so much for joining. She says, so true, one has to manage expectations and prioritize health. After becoming a mom, it has become really hard to prioritize my health. But once I made the mind shift and understood that living healthy isn't for today, but for my future and asking myself, what do I want to look and feel like in 10, 20, 30 years time? It helped me put things into perspective and learn to make time again for exercise and prioritizing my health while having realistic expectations of myself. Thanks so much for sharing that, Yana. Please feel free um, to add any comments, questions in the comment section. Um, <clears throat> Tracy, what are some of the tips that you have? I mean, you know, we've mentioned life is so demanding, especially as women, we have so many different roles, so many things vying for our attention. Um, how do you have any tips for how to um, include exercise into our lifestyles with the, all the demands that we're juggling day to day? Yes, well, I think, um, first of all, be curious, you know, I, I think curiosity is such a great way to see anything. I mean, if we sit there and say, oh, I haven't got time for it. Well, it's kind of not allowing us to see something new around that. So first of all, be curious and be open to challenging your thoughts and challenging what they're telling you, because often they're, they're really just, you know, not very helpful in a lot of ways. Um, and I think if we get, again, we have to be really, really clear on why we want to do it. You know, I mean, as I said, exercise has just got this general, oh, you've just got to do it. Well, you know, really getting clear on why you want to do it. You know, what, what is it that it's going to bring you? Um, and really learn about the benefits of it and the different types of it. I mean, the mental well-being that can come with going for a walk or doing a session is so, so valuable. And you may not necessarily feel like doing it all the time before you do it but when you do it and afterwards all those endorphins and hormone that that rush that you get I mean it feels amazing and it can carry you through um, so I think yeah just sit in that curiosity know that you know your mind is your own worst enemy sometimes that that feeling of oh, I can't be bothered or I don't want to do it well that's going to say that all the time that's really it's our mind's job to kind of get in there and, and talk us out of doing a lot of things but if we can get, again take it back to, well, what matters to me? This does this matter to me? Is this important to me? Um, and then we have a lot more, I guess, options around, well, do we just want to listen to that or do we do want, we want to do it anyway? Or maybe we won't do it today, but that's okay because it's always about today. And, we're, and you know, may not work out today, 
but that doesn't mean that we can't look at it tomorrow and again make those choices about what's important to us and why it matters to us. Um, prioritize why it matters. Uh, what else did I have here? Um, I think, as I said, you know, really just getting clear, you know, on what why it's important to you. You know, as I said, if someone just says to you, go and do it, you know, I think you'll find a hundred ways not to do it. Um, but, you know, just get curious. It's, there is so much to love about moving. Um, and I think, as I said, it just doesn't have to be the way people necessarily think it has to be. Um, and I think if we just get curious in that, work out what we want to do, try different things as well, you know, like, you know, maybe cycling's for you or maybe maybe it is something like swimming or, you know, if you've never tried it, how would you even know? You know, again, the mind likes to say, oh, you won't like that or you might look silly. Well, who cares? We're always going to look silly when we start something new. That doesn't matter. We can step outside of that and just do it anyway. And and you never know, you might really, really enjoy it. It might be something that you that you want to love. So yeah, that'd be my my top tips. Get curious and try something new anyway. <laughs> Brilliant, he said, I love how you keep bringing it back to prioritizing yourself and bringing it back to your, you know, your own personal goal, your own personal why. Um, Peter Delanoy also shares that he says the why um, then a commitment start with one thing absolutely absolutely love that thanks so much for sharing that Peter um, what's the average amount of exercise that women should be getting I know you you know you're very um, clear about you know not giving yourself such a hard time if you can't do it every day but if we're taking just the average week what would you say would be the ideal amount of exercise um, as part of a healthy lifestyle an average per week yeah well, again, I think it has to come down to your individual state of current health and also your goals and your lifestyle. I mean, what I was doing now versus what I was doing five years ago is very, very different. And uh, I think if we constantly reassess that, we can constantly challenge that. I mean, I have no desire to be a marathon runner. I have no desire to be a bodybuilder. If I had those goals, then I think the, the regime would probably have to be a lot bigger than what it is. I mean, for me, it's about maintaining my strength. It's about feeling good. It's about having time uh, to clear my mind. Um, and, you know, that to me looks like sometimes only maybe walking my kids to school and doing a lunge walk up from the bottom of the, the street to my, my house. And that's all I've got time for that day. Or I might have, you know, 20 push ups here and there. You know, I do a lot of micro workouts in and around my day. Uh, which at first people kind of, you know, find that a little bit funny because, you know, again, we have, oh, we've got to get dressed up and we've got to spend an hour and we've got to do 10 minutes warm up and 10 minutes. No, I don't, I don't believe we do. I think we can play around with it, as I said. And, you know, some days I do do a half an hour workout. Some days I go for a 45 minute run. Other days, it's just literally five minutes here and there doing different things. Um, but I, I, I do try and move in some way every day. Um, but if I'm sick, then I'll rest. If I'm really sore, I'll rest. Um, and I might do a little bit of stretching or something like that. I think my mind's always trying to find little ways to, to bring it in because I love it so much. And it's just been part yeah. of my you know, life for so long. But for somebody that it's new to, then I would just say, take it one step at a time, take it one day at a time and just be open to trying different things. But the last thing you want to do is make rules and then beat yourself up about them if you don't achieve them again I, I think that's just such a, a trap that we can fall into and it's much better to just take it one day at a time do little things like if you want to get up in the morning I don't get up in the morning and go for a run I just don't you know my sleep's too important to me when I've been up with kids or you know I, I'll find time and during the day to do it I cannot get up early but for some people they really really want to do that and I think that's fabulous. So get your shoes out, get your stuff out, get something out to remind you as soon as you wake up in the morning to get up and to do it if that's really, you know, if that's what you want to do. So yeah, it's just challenging those things, playing around with it and, um, you know, knowing, know that you can keep changing it and keep reassessing it. Uh, but just try and enjoy it because it's so good and it makes you feel so good as well. And the more you enjoy it, the more benefit you're going to get from it as well. 
Yeah, I think that's such a key point that you made to just learn to enjoy it, you know, instead of just seeing it as this burden or this task that has to be done. Absolutely love that. I was going to ask you, you know, how do you prioritize exercise? But I think you've basically covered that. <laughs> Is there anything specific in terms of your own personal regimen that you'd like to share with other women? Um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, I love strength training, you know, I mean, I think some women worry that it's going to make them bulky or, uh, you know, there's still a whole lot of myths around there about strength training, but it so doesn't, not for females, um, you know, but it's just so good to feel strong. I just think the cardio myth is so pervasive because we have that attached to weight loss in a lot of ways, but of course, you know, this course will undo a lot of that um, and show people that, it's, that's, it's not cardio that's going to bring uh, weight loss. And I think too, cardio can be quite stressful. If we're already under a lot of stress, you know, adding, adding that extra stress on, not necessarily the right way, certainly not for me. I used to run all the time. I don't now. I just find it, you know, it's just, um, I don't know. I just don't enjoy it, enjoy it as much, but I'll find at least two to three sessions of strength. So deadlift, weight, you know, uh, lunges, just some simple body weight stuff. I don't do, I work out at home. I've just got a little gym in the backyard that used to be my little personal training studio. And of course with COVID, it was great. I had all that set up to use, but I don't actually go to a gym at all. Um, but, you know, our bodies are incredibly useful. Um, you know, sitting in a chair and standing up, you know, all these functional exercises that as we age are going to really help us, you know, to get in and out of a bath, to be able to reach up and get things off a shell, open, you know, jars, all these things that we want to keep being able to do for as long as possible. Think about the functionality behind them. And that to me is strength training and, uh, you know, keeping my muscles strong to do those things. Brilliant. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, and Renan, so good to see you here. Um, thanks so much for joining. Yana's got a question for you, Tracy. Um, she says, what would be the most important thing that you would recommend that women can start doing today to improve their health? Oh, it's one thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I guess um, I'm assuming people, you know, have already addressed diet. But, you know, obviously, to me, that's the first, thing that I would address is is diet making sure that you know you're limiting processed foods and obviously you know trying to get fat adapted and eating lower carbs um, but then you know I think particularly for women and in the work that I do I would say that kindness building self-compassion uh, you know really being kinder to ourselves the kinder we are to ourselves the kinder we will be with everybody else around us as well and I think I just see that that is such a big part. Um, it's hard to do because we're not, we're conditioned to be so hard on ourselves and to beat ourselves up. But I think it really affects our health in negative ways. And the kinder we are to ourselves, the more we'll free ourselves up really to not be so limited by what we've done in the past and, you know, free ourselves up to see that we can, we can move, we can change, we can shift. We've just got to see that we can do that um so yeah brilliantly said thank you so much um another question as well what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting for women would you recommend it well again I would say that's very individual um so with my clients I can talk I mean I can talk about my personal perspective and how um I help some of my clients who want to go down that path do it I always get the diet, we get the diet working first because I do find with most people, once they do become fat adapted, the body generally takes them into in, in some form of intermittent fasting. But to me, intermittent fasting only works if it feels good and if it's quite effortless. I certainly think the forced fasting as though it's another you know, thing we have to do and another layer of pressure, not necessarily uh, the best for you know the person if that's how they're seeing it so again look I think I do I do do it in that I only eat when I'm hungry so that looks like to me only eating a couple of times a day so if somebody asked me do you intermittent fast I said well I guess I do but I don't actually say right tomorrow I'm only eating but you know I'm not going to eat till now I wait until I'm hungry and then I listen to my body and I eat when I'm hungry and if I've trained the day before the next time I'm probably going to be a bit more hungry so again 
if we can listen to our body and when it's working and it's fat adapted, um, I just kind of slip on in with it and, and do what it sort of guides me to do. Um, and I think that's quite different to sort of saying you have to intermittent fast to be healthy. I don't, I just, that's how I've seen it with my work and, and with myself. Thank you, Tracy. Anne asks, what are your thoughts on yoga as opposed to strength training? Yes, go for it if you enjoy it. I've never enjoyed it. <laughs> I've never, ever gotten into it. I have, I'm actually a qualified Pilates instructor, so I have definitely gotten into the Pilates. Yoga, not for me, but I think if you enjoy that, absolutely, it's, it's a fabulous um, way to build strength. I think, you know, I think it's, um, again, it's looking at the different ways. If we're always doing the same thing, our muscles get really adapted to it. So it's about throwing in little challenges here and there. Our body loves, well, it doesn't love to be challenged, but the benefits of challenging our body are, are fantastic. So, you know, like if you only ever run, then try something different. You, you know, it's really, really good to shake it up. Um, and I, I would say the same with yoga. It's fantastic if you enjoy it, if it brings you joy and you, you love it. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Tracy. Um, and then for women um, that are pregnant, what is the ideal amount of exercise that they should be getting um, daily? And what types of exercise would you recommend? Well, again, this is going to be a very individual answer. I think it's going to depend very much on your fitness level before you got pregnant. Um, and Again, really checking in with your body and listening to your body. I certainly know for myself, I uh, definitely wore, uh, cut back a lot when I was pregnant. Uh, I, was still train I was still a personal trainer during a few of my pregnancies and I just adapted things again. I just listened to my body. I, 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 there's no rules and there's no one size fits all. I think you have to look at, as I said, your fitness level when you've come into it. If it feels good, it's okay. I mean, I remember this, some people say, oh, you shouldn't run. You shouldn't do this. Well, I, I think if you were a runner, I mean, I was a runner and I kept running until it got too uncomfortable um, and then I stopped. So um, just listen to your body. You know, I wouldn't start, you know, if you were not fit coming into pregnancy, you know, it's probably not a good idea to start wanting to run a marathon while you're pregnant. <laughs> Um, so again, bringing it back to common sense, I think often really does kind of give you the answer and, and looking at how, you know, where you are yourself. Yeah. Brilliant, Lisa. Thank you so much, Tracy. It's always such a delight to have you on here. Um, I don't see any other, oh, I see there is one more question. Is it okay for women to consume dairy on a daily basis um, or could it affect their hormones? <laughs> well, that's a really big question, and uh, I'll have to say I'm not fully qualified to answer, but I can tell you on my experience, again, it's very individual. A lot of women over 40 can struggle with dairy. I think there is, uh, particularly if there's autoimmune issues. Now, I have Hashimoto's currently in remission, but dairy is an issue for me. Um, so, again, it's very individual. I know a lot of people that do absolutely fine on dairy as well. So, yeah, I like everything in life. I think there's no one size fits all, fits all and you need to look at your particular circumstances. Um, but, yeah, I think you, know, you, you will ask 10 people that question, you will get 10 different answers. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you have to really work it out for yourself with that one. But uh, I think it can be problematic for sure. Thank you, Tracy. Um, Anne Brennan shares, love your point about fasting, um, listening to your body, not the clock on the wall. May I add, some people panic when they don't be like um, eating as they had previously been told. They think that there's something wrong. Yes, and I would totally agree with you. I have many, many clients that, you know, get very um, concerned when they are not hungry and, you know, but I need to eat, you know, we're so ingrained to, eat three times a day or five or six times a day to keep our metabolism high or whatever it is that we're told and again it's just understanding that the, you know all beliefs really are there to be questioned and uh, again when we go through the process and it's, it's okay because even if you're not hungry when you're fat adapted your body's actually eating because what it's doing is accessing your stored energy right so it's it's really comforting to know that you may not feel hungry but your body is still 
eating in some way. So yeah, again, it's just challenging the beliefs and being kind with ourselves when we do it. And, but actually going through the process and when we go through the process and we say, oh, we're okay, we're actually okay. We, we can go without a meal if we're not hungry and we'll be okay. Thank you. Yana says, thank you so much, Tracy. Very insightful answers and really appreciate your individualized approach. I think we all share that sentiment. Thank you so much, Tracy. Like I said, always such a delight to have you here. We're also very thank excited you. to have you on the sports nutrition course. Um, before we end the live, I don't see any other questions or comments coming in. Um, are there any specific tips that you'd like to share for um, or to the woman in the audience? <laughs> Uh, specific tips, just, yeah, I think my biggest tip is just be curious, be curious and beliefs are there to be broken, you know, allow yourself to try something new just because this is how you did it yesterday or last year doesn't mean that has to be how you need to do it tomorrow and be kind with yourself, always work on self-compassion and I think things just will fall into place for you a lot more easily. Uh, that you know if you can do that so yeah I hope that's okay <laughs> thank you so much Tracy um you can catch the full training of, or Tracy's full training in the sports nutrition course like I said which mentioned which launches in June this highly anticipated training is open to exercise and fitness professionals coaches medical and allied healthcare professionals um, and it's currently open for enrollment the link is in the description below um, it's currently at a 30% early bird discount um, for more information please keep an eye on all our social pages um, as I mentioned uh, continue to mention Tracy is one of the key lectures is talking about exercise and the modern woman. She's just shared a little bit of what her content includes in the training. Um, so for full access to that, please feel free to join us on um, this highly anticipated module. We want to wish all our women a very, very happy um, International Day of Action for Women's Health tomorrow. Please be safe. Feel free to share with us what it is that you're doing in honor of this day. Um, from all of us here at the Nutrition Network, JC, thank you so much. Um, and thank, thank you. you so much to our audience for joining. See you all soon. Bye-bye.